feeling out of my head Hard to even talk to her when she's out of my bed Tell her sorry I'm busy but she does what I said Then start calling all the time, say my battery dead Probably rapping instead but I ain't perfect Girl I can tell you right now it ain't worth it Gonna end up breaking your heart just like a circuit Even though I never try to do that on purpose Swerving out of my lanes and I'm sober If you aren't acting the same we'll move over She don't know what I do with almost half my time Check Twitter, yeah and god damn my dream Damn college girls got a nigga straight trippin' One night stand, next day she be living. Go so hard that my mix ain't skipping. Play Miss Johnson and she's that is my younger cousin, Josh Wright. I mean, I I still think of him as like 12 years old, like at all the family get-togethers or whatever, but yeah, Josh Wright, aka J Wright, just released his very first music video ever, and he actually has his first album out on iTunes. I actually just bought it myself, it's only nine bucks. The kid's getting amazing. He's getting awesome, I have to give it to him. He's in Florida right now, in school, for music production. So like he's putting a lot of quality and effort and then he's gonna move to either Boston or New York to further his career, so. This is his, his first official music video called Out of My Head on YouTube. And I just linked this video in the info box below. So check it out in the info box below, listen to it. I really think you guys will like it a lot. I legitimately like listening to it a lot. So that's Jay Wright. Talk about your hydration gains, boom, 89 cents at Walmart. So it's got a new package from Isatory, my El Sponsorosos, that's Spanish for sponsors. More Hypergrow, yeah buddy, smooth vanilla. I have only tried the chocolate of their Hypergrow and I love it thus far. I've never been a vanilla guy, but as you guys know, I do love the vanilla Eat Smart. So, we'll try something new out, the smooth vanilla. Ice Story does do a really good job with the taste, I'll give them that. And more of the ice test in the cool grape. That's my favorite flavor, hands down, so. Boom. That's my new stack, literally. Courtesy of the mailman. Oh yeah, and the Ice Story website is in the info box below, as well as my discount code, NWB15, which you can use for all of this on their site to get it for cheaper as often as you'd like to. You're welcome. So some of you saw this footage already, but not many of you. The last video I did had to be taken down due to copyright issues with the music in it. It only got 8,000 views though, so I know for a fact that not a lot of you saw it. So I wanted to share it with you guys because I feel it's kind of important. What we're doing here is we're taking a few steps back and we're really laying down a new foundation to build from. I'm using all high reps and super lightweight right now. Totally out of my element. The last four months have been consisting of only sets of two and three. Even when it was lighter weight and speed reps, it would still be sets of two and three reps. So 12 is way out of my element. Not to mention the fact that this is 12 pause reps per set. Now keep in mind guys, most of the time when powerlifters say pause reps, it just means to stop the bar in the chest, to eliminate any bounce or momentum to help the weight back up. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a one Mississippi pause. Anyway, three sets of 12 pause reps using only 225, but I was so out of my element here. By rep 10, my triceps started feeling like jello. It was like cardio for me, but this is good because when you get weak like that and you get fatigued, 
your, your weaknesses come out. It highlights your weaknesses and what you need to work on. So one, I need to just work on reps in general. I just suck at reps because I have a bad habit of coming loose in between each rep. I don't stay tight. And that's mostly why I suck at the reps. It's not even a muscular stamina thing so much. The other big issue is those last couple of reps there when I was getting fatigued, you saw I would sink the bar down into my stomach and then launch it back up with my stomach. And that's what I would do when I could no longer just hold it firm at the surface of my chest anymore. So to better my control at the bottom of the rep and to avoid sinking it into my stomach, I'm throwing in spoto pressing. Spoto pressing again is where you suspend the bar an inch above your chest, not letting it touch your chest. And this is going to keep all the weight on your arms 100% of the time, which is a lot harder than allowing the bar to actually rest on your chest, taking some of the weight off of your hands. This will also make your regular pause reps in a competition easier. <laughs> So after all of that, we ended this workout with three second count long pauses. So I actually had somebody count out three seconds for me at the bottom of each rep. And this really trains not only your control at the bottom of a rep, but also your fast explosion back up. It's amazing. So I started off really light for my first set just to see how it felt because I was super exhausted from all the high reps. And then I was able to kick it back up. <laughs> One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Now Josh Hanka actually has me doing peck flies. Nothing crazy, three sets of 12. But this isn't my idea. This is actually his, and he says it's for good pec health, just stretching them, keeping them limber, keeping them moving in all ranges of motion. It's just overall good for both pec tightness, pec pain, and pec strength to avoid pec tears. So I like him. It'll get my chest bigger too, I hope. That feel when you can't fall asleep, no matter how hard you try, until finally you hear birds chirping and you give up and you get out of bed and you go on your computer for what you think is only a half an hour, until you go and open your curtains thinking it's still dark out and it's actually broad daylight. Talk about insomnia. Really weird too because I did not have any caffeine or anything for actually the last two days. So just totally random insomnia. I figured I would take this insomniac moment to share with you guys my latest pet project, my little hobby slash collection that I began recently. Boom! This is the beginning of my road to becoming a whiskey snob, not an alcoholic. And I want to clarify that, guys. This is not about drinking, getting drunk, or getting shit-faced. This is literally about becoming sophisticated in the whole Scotch family. So to give you guys an example, I bought this bad boy. This is a 15-year-old single malt Scotch. I bought this guy the day of my powerlifting meet, which was three days before my birthday. It was a little treat to myself for finishing the meet and my birthday, and... As you can see, it's still pretty full. I didn't drink a whole lot of it. My friend, my best friend Nick Ferraro, gave me this for my birthday. After I told him I wanted to start becoming you know, more sophisticated and more savvy in the scotch world, he got me this bad boy, which is a really, really, really nice brand of scotch. It's 12 years aged. I haven't even opened this one yet, and I don't plan to for a while. He also got me a new decanter set. I had that old crystal one, but it's been long gone, so he got me a new one. This is an Italian decanter set. Six glasses, super, super nice. And he got me sipping stones, which are really cool. These things, basically, you put them in the freezer. They get really cold. You put them in your drink like you would ice, but they don't melt and water down your drink like ice does. So this is the humble beginnings to my uh, collection of fine scotches that I want to slowly accumulate. And I do want to make that really clear, guys, because obviously I don't want to promote the wrong thing on my channel here. This is not about drinking or getting hammered. Honestly, it's not. I've always loved the whiskey family, be it regular Jack Daniels whiskey to bourbon to scotch, obviously. Anything that's in the whiskey family, I've always loved. I really just want to get a good collection going. This is the same way wine connoisseurs get a wine collection going. That's what I want to start doing with the whiskey family, specifically the single malt scotches. And uh, I want to slowly accumulate more expensive and uh, more quality bottles as I go. It's a pretty cool little collection hobby there.